call this meeting of Ohio County Fiscal Court to order uh, on this 10th uh, day of September 2019, a little bit after 5 p.m. I want to ask uh, Bo Wright to lead us in a prayer and play. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for, Father, thank you for uh, gathering us here in the court meeting. Please be with the magistrates and the judge as they uh, look out for our future for Ohio County. And please be with the sick and forgive us of our many sins. And thank you for a blessed day. And amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> okay. Hey, sorry. This uh, before you, you have the minutes of the uh, August 13th meeting um, and the September 3rd special call meeting. I'd like a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve. Mo motion by Jason. We do both of them. Second by Sam. That's for both of them. Is there any discussion, corrections, or additions to either set of minutes? Discussion, corrections, or, or additions to the minutes? Yeah, they were asking. Being none. I mean, there was one little thing attached, but it's from what the uh, state sent back. On the flex. Yeah. And if they put on there the same district on all the, I mean, it's just the it really road names are there. We know where they. Yeah, are. it really doesn't matter any, but they did. I thought it was a, a paper that had gone up to the state, but it's what they kicked back, so yeah. I don't think it's going to affect any. No, it does. The law puts in the second district. Matter of fact, those was approved today. We can start them. We got the contract today. Okay. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, like sign. Minister approved. Before you have the bills, claims, payments, and transfers, I need a motion to approve. Motion for Sam Small. Second. Second by Larry Morphew. Is there any discussion? Discussion on the bills, claims. Uh, I got one question on the late list. I think it's just Joe and Larry. This is on the community dumpsters. What we see on here is just half of the dumpster. No, that's all of it. I think y'all. I think you guys agreed to. You wouldn't do that no more. Okay. Any other uh, discussion on the bills, claims, payments, and transfers? Being none, still roll call. Small. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnson. Yes. <coughs> Yes. Yes. Thank you. You have the treasurer's financial uh, <laughs> statement for August of 2019. Mm -hmm. so motion by uh, Joe Barnes, second by Larry <coughs> Camp. Any questions for Ann or discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Um, we're skipping the thing on the clerk's report. It's not here. But we do have the clerk's uh, 2019 certificate of delinquency. Yeah. But we do. We need a motion on that to motion. motion by Sam Small. Do I have a second? I'll take it. Second with Joe Barnes. Any questions about the certificate of delinquency? <laughs> and I believe on this case we're just acknowledging we've just got it in the files and it's got to go to the auditors. Yes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carried. <laughs> okay. okay. Charlie Shields. Uh, if y'all address for 
for an update on it. We're still in the fourth district. Uh, it's gone a whole lot slower than what I anticipated. So what we're doing now is, instead of us out driving it, we're measuring it off, like Savannah's measuring it off being here on the computer. If we have real problems, we're driving out to the roads. Like we're downtown Portsville now, and we got some problems up there like we anticipated, but it's just taking us a whole lot longer. And as y'all well know, we just wrapped up with all the FEMA stuff coming back in from last. So that's kind of played weight too on us on that. How much longer do you think you'll be in the fourth? If we don't have no more disasters, hopefully by the end of the month we'll be done. Poor. We'll move over to the fifth. But we was I hate to say it with Larry sitting here, but Fordsville, the fourth district was the easiest district to do. And that's just because there haven't been that many people moving in and moving out up there. The, all the rest of them has, and that's where we got a bunch of trouble. Joe's area, I, that's gonna be that's gonna be a booger up there or down there, cause it's it's well messed up down there. Uh, I hate to say that Joe, but it is. And we're just running that in all, all the places. And what we're gonna do is when we're done with the fourth, I'll get with Larry before we send out the certified letters to everybody, telling everybody, tell the ones they got to change their addresses, cause he'll be receiving all the phone calls first before we will so that way we're all on the same page on that. Yeah. sounds good did you get my number changed no I'm I will. Four, two, nine, eight, four, four, zero, zero. <laughs> yeah. hey you got a minute when you get finished Charlie I'm getting ready to leave but I, I I'll talk. go ahead no come on up is there anything else to it uh, yeah, yes, so you're going to present this still on the Cherie yes, Road we, project where we, we've been on it all day yeah. today. Let me talk a little bit about Cherie Road. Uh, we met today, myself, Mr. Ann Melton, Justin, and representatives from, and the judge representatives from Maverick. Uh, tomorrow you'll see it come out in the paper, be bid out. We anticipate we'll probably be the only ones to bid on it. Uh, we're going to have a special, I think, Judge special call. We're going to have it on the 24th. We'll award the bid to them. As soon as we do, Maverick will start in on the project up there on Shreves Road, getting all the paperwork signed, sealed, delivered. And that way, they'll be a representative of us. And they will see, they'll go out and seek the money before they do the project. Ohio County this Court will not be at $1.00. The only thing we will do is hold the records so when Ann gets audited, she'll have a copy of the records here on file. But otherwise, Maverick or I don't think anybody else will bid on it, but anybody else bid on whoever's word to bid, they'll be out all the all the financials and all that. And the way I interpreted the project <coughs> put up on the river, also will be a new bridge put in yes. Charles Street Road. That's correct. So that's the way the project's gonna be wrote. Uh, that's y'all getting questions on that one? I got one more little thing. Uh, a while back, we sent a, I sent an email out to all of y'all. I'm going to hand y'all one of these for y'all to look it over. I've talked to some of the masters and the judge. This is this litter or rule maintenance ordinance that we get asked about all the time. Uh, for five or six years now, we've been doing this and it's got water down back up, so I got well, with Justin and we got some little teeth in it. Uh, I think we got a rope to get a start on it. Let y'all look it over. And if y'all got some changes or thank you to add or delete, let me know. And hopefully the next court meeting, regular court meeting, we'll put it on the agenda and see what y'all <coughs> I tell you what I want to do. The special call meeting we're calling to uh, to read that. Uh, I mean to accept the Maverick contract, the bid, which will be the only one we'll have. Uh, I want to go ahead and put this on the agenda too. Is that, is that already been posted? There? I yes. Mean, oh God. Okay. Did you talk? Sorry. Sorry. No. Oh, I have to. I'm sorry. I just want to. Judge, we might put on on the. Go ahead, I'm listening. We might put on that uh, special call also before it's published as far as the ad is for the second reading on the sheriff's fees ordinance. Okay. Uh, we'll do that. It's already been advertised. The deadline was okay. 12 o'clock today. Well, we'll we're just doing it at the next meeting then. I mean, it's retroactive. Okay. 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 We didn't fall through the private. Pay that down there. Okay. 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 Okay.
Hey, what time, time is the meeting, Judge? It's at four. If that's okay with everybody. I went down there and looked, and it's a yeah, it's brush only. So under that's not handing out these burn law. If they was doing any kind of like barn wood or something like that, we would have a, a ground to stand on. They're but not if you here. cut a tree down and burn the trees, there ain't a thing in the world we can do about it. There ain't no ordinance. There ain't nothing in the state. I, that's what I basically So do. and they're in the county, so. Yeah. There ain't nothing we can do unless I have a, uh, that. a tree cutting business that has, is burning these trees, green trees, and it's flying in the neighborhood and ash is cool every day. Oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. We're trying to figure out how we can deal you know, with that. They suggested, and I can go talk to the gentleman, they suggested digging a hole yeah. and burning it in there. Because back when we were doing the FEMA, the old nine, or we got booted out, someone else was doing it. Uh, that's what sure. we was doing. We dug a hole by FEMA standards. They were pulling the brush in there, and and that cuts down some of the smoke and all that. I don't know if he's got enough ground. Well, the neighbor the other day, he, up the hill, he said he's had his door open, the fire alarm went off. That's, I how, like that. that's how bad. <laughs> and then they're getting ash on their truck. Okay. There ain't no ordinance, there ain't nothing in the state, there ain't, they're actually not handed out these things, there ain't nothing in their state. Now, if he was adding different stuff to it, we could, but he ain't. Anything else, guys? Thanks, sir. Thanks, Johnny. Like I said, we're, we're going to bring it up on 24th. Did you hear what Justin said? Y'all ready me to put that on there, too. I thought he was on second read. But I already, we can't do it. Okay. We're, we're yeah, we're just going to do it at the next meeting. So okay. Be okay. They already advertised at 12 o'clock. They already printed it. Okay. Um, the, uh, there's no one here. I don't, I, don't, I don't see anyone here from the Public Library Trustees Board. If not, we're going to move right on. Uh, so, Jody, you're up. I'm assuming you will have the paperwork for um, designating the IDA this You do? I think everyone has one. Okay, okay, good. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to give you a short presentation on what the fiscal year 19 budget for uh, the TVA RDAAP funds were used for. Uh, J Jody's telling us about the, that, and unusually, Jody, believe it or not, we're having trouble hearing you. Get closer up to that thing and cough loud. Actually, so loud. I know this time I'm wanting you loud enough. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the fiscal year 19 RDAAP funds. I'm going to give you an overview of what those funds were spent on and then uh, the budgeting plans for fiscal year 20, which I do have a quorum for, and uh, it has been approved by the IDA board. And those are, you might say the IDA board, those no. are the TVA money that, you know. So yes, yeah. RDAAP funds are the TVA money, yes. Oh, that had to go sure. to an IDA. Um, so we started out with $51,282.05. Uh, $40,000 went towards the water plant debt We've spent $4,254.08, and there are $7,027.97 uh, left for fiscal year 20 projects. That money can roll over into the next year, and I do want to point out that we didn't receive those funds until pretty late in the year as well, so you can move on to the next. So if you want to see how it was spent, it's broken down there. Next Generation Leadership is a a leadership program that we're working with the Chamber of Commerce and we have spent a little bit of money there. Um, OCDA operations, about 3%, a little over 3% of the money. Hub operations, 10%, and most of it's gone towards marketing for Bluegrass Crossings and Industrial Recruitment, which was the intent of the money. So that's what it was spent on. Moving forward to fiscal year 20, um, our plans for the money is mostly around marketing and industrial recruitment, which will include strategic planning, um, place making, industrial recruitment itself, and uh, all involve marketing the community, workforce development activities, site selection, and property development. If you wanted a breakdown. Any questions about that? I don't think they got a copy of the, the money breakdown. 
They got a copy of the show. They got a copy of the resolution. Yeah. No, I sent all of that. Yeah, no, she sent it to me, but I only need a copy of the resolution. Okay. That's my fault. That's all right. Um, so we want to. Uh, what we need is to pass two resolutions. Explain, explain why we've got two. Well, the first one, um, and I don't have them in front of me. No, that's fine. But uh, one of them is to designate um, the IDA board as okay. the receiving body okay. for the fiscal year 20 fund. Yes. Yeah. Which is this one. Um, this one. And then the other one's authorizing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the other one's authorizing us to receive those funds. Okay. So. All right. Let's do a motion and second, and then if there's further discussion or questions for her, we can do that. I'll make a motion. Motion with Sam Small. And this is to appoint. No, this is for the resolution, for the first resolution. Yeah, designating. Uh, yeah. Designating oh. the idea yeah. is the receiving yeah. body of the fund. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have motion and second. You got Jason second. Uh, any further discussion or questions for them? Uh, have most second any further discussion on the first resolution is there any further discussion being none all in favor say aye opposed uh, like sign that resolution is passed. Right, right here. Then the second resolution, I need a motion and a second for it as well. I'll make a motion. Motion by Sam Small. I'll let the board all second. Too. Second by Jason Bullock. Is there any questions or discussions on this one? Questions for Jody or discussion? Not all in favor say aye. Uh, Opposed like sign. That's passed. I'll sign it right now. Thank you, Jody. I would also like to bring up one additional thing. Okay. Um, I don't know if you all have looked at the website that is out there for Ohio County and specifically for economic development for Ohio County, but we will need to update that website. It's severely outdated. I've learned in the last few months that 90% of site selectors and industrial leaders first start out with Google, um, and they usually are putting in a state name and economic development. That's how they find us, and we're not even locatable that way. Um, it takes us to a Kentucky website. We do get there, and you can go on to Think Kentucky, and it usually pops up on a map, all the industrial sites. You can't find us that way. Um, you have to literally type in our community, Beaver Dam usually. And then Bluegrass Crossings will pop up if you're looking for an industrial site. And then they would have to click on my contact information on there in order to pull up our website. Furthermore, it's just not user friendly and it just needs an update. So um, this does cover other community entities, not just economic development, but it is specifically for economic development. To get a professional website, um, like what we need to do the things that I think all of us would agree we need to do, which is recruit industry. Um, it's going to be seventeen to twenty thousand dollars for that. So I would like to ask the court if there would be any contribution to that effort for a new website for our online presence as a community. Uh, I believe, if any of y'all want to jump in here, you can. I believe what we need is to go ahead and get that uh, justification written up more and get a, a solid price on it and then come back to the court with it. Are you referring just to the specific economic development page that branches out or the OhioCountyKY.gov? Not the OhioCountyKY.gov, the okay. OhioCounty.com, which is economic development, the chamber, other, it covers a lot of different areas of it. Um, and if anybody and if anybody hits Kentucky, she knows it. If somebody's interested in doing anything in Kentucky anywhere, she would know it by that program. And the seventeen to twenty thousand dollars is a direct quote from okay. a um, a community website builder. They they do that uh, for several communities in the area, and okay. it was referred to me by the Cabinet for Economic Development, this organization, for some of the 
better websites that are in the area. So that's why I gave you that range. Okay. Uh, On the IDA money where you got marketing and industrial recruitment, can we not use some of that to help? Yes. We can. There are some other things too that I would be presenting to you, you all in the near future if um, I'm hired as the director. I don't want to be too presumptuous in what the future of economic development in the county would be before that takes place. So. Okay. Uh, I think we're good. I think uh, we'll look at it from all angles and uh, we'll go ahead and send that to the. Uh, um, I want to be the finance committee, but I also want uh, I want uh, Sam or or Jason in there too. One of them are in the, and our finance committee to look at and look at before our uh, October. Who's on the finance meeting. committee? Is it Joe and Joe and Larry Morphew? Okay, and then one of us represents yeah. the IDA. Yeah, uh huh. And do that and be do it before that uh, first meeting in uh, October. And. Uh, Get get Jody to get all the fat stuff together, brief uh, brief them on it, and then you be there. They'll let you know what's going to be. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the library people did show up, board of uh, trustees. So we're going to recognize them now. Thank you, Judge. We apologize if we were late and didn't, we were in meeting, so I apologize for not being here. Let me share with you our written. Notification of our tax rates, which we're required by law to notify you of those things. And then, just the reading this statement. Thank you. Good catch. Yeah. I did that on purpose, John. Yeah. Uh, as I mentioned, according to uh, KRS 65A, the special purpose districts must present written and verbal notification of the fiscal court of the tax rates which uh, have been set for the upcoming year. So in our meeting last month, the uh, Library Board of Trustees said the following rates, real property at 8.9, personal property at 11.96, and watercraft motor vehicle at 4.2. We just comment that those rates were less than the recommended compensating rates that the state suggested. So we're still trying to, to be both uh, responsible to our mission and responsible to the taxpayers. So if you have any more questions or comments, we'd be glad to, to answer those. Or if you have anything I need to share with you beyond that, we have to do that. You see a motion to acknowledge that. That we got it. Yeah. yeah. I'll make a motion to acknowledge the Ohio County Public Library. Motion with Jason Bullock. Do we need to say, do we need to real <coughs> and motor? Sam, come on. And uh, like I said, just recognizing that they did give it to us. Uh, we don't have any uh, jurisdiction over that, but they just have to report it to us. And this thing's evolving on how these rules do are going to work in the future. So, uh, all in favor say aye. All right. Opposed like Sam. We got it. Right, thank you, and I do thank encourage you to read that paper. It tells you all the. Uh, we will. We will. Thank you. Um, thank you all. Yeah. Wait. Okay. Uh, give you just a little bit of uh, history here. Then Larry Morphew and I have a motion to make and second for your consideration. Uh, I've been meeting a lot lately with uh, um, poultry producers and people that buy poultry litter and people that haul poultry litter. Uh, and Larry uh, Morphew sat in with us on a meeting with several farmers, uh, and uh, they're represented here tonight by Tyson Sandifer. And what I'm proposing. And, and there's an issue with uh, with pub, uh, commercial trucks haul chicken litter all the time, and even if farm tags they're exempted they're exempted under our uh, weight limit ordinance, but not the commercial trucks hauling poultry litter. So what we propose to do is to even that playing field by 
exempting poultry litter from the weight limit, but we were going to have the poultry producer or the receiver of the litter to call the road supervisor, list the roads being used on the clean out, uh, acknowledge the condition of the road, and identify the, ha the hauler and the approximate dates of hauling. And uh, what this would give us a chance to do is to look at if there was a uh, short, uh, little bit longer distance they kept you off of a brand new blacktop road or a new chip and seal road and they did not have to use that road the main thing is that we'd want to get them to the gravel road or to the state road as quickly as possible so that they they wouldn't do extra damage to our roads and this will be to our advantage if we can do this uh, so I propose I'll read this thing in its uh, entirety and make the motion to, to for the first reading of this amendment uh, Trucks hauling poultry litter are exempted from the permit process, providing the poultry producer or the receiver of the litter calls the road supervisor and lists the roads being used on the cleanout, acknowledges the condition of the road, identifies the hauler and the approximate dates of the hauling. So the, I make that motion for that amendment. I'll second. And Larry seconds it. Now it's open for discussion. So, on this, the last side heard, and, and Tyson, you're welcome to come up if you want to make a statement or say anything, but was someone was going to stand at the end of this, somebody was going to be accountable? Uh, it sort of puts it on the uh, poultry farmer uh, to communicate with us, and that would be the responsible. I think talking about the yeah, well. Okay, so, so are we completely omitting them from any damages? No, well, we're are not. We, are we just trying to, and, and I'm for it, Lord knows I'm for it, but I want to be sure, are we just trying to redirect them so we can get less miles on our county roads? Or is it that, how do we know they're going to conform to this? And that's really why I want to be up here to, you know, uh, we both been around it a long time, yeah. so well, no. He's but uh, he, let's just say if they wanted to cut through a road because it saves sure. miles, do we have that guarantee or that you know that, that's what I'm asking if this gives us that? We don't have that guarantee. Unfortunately, uh, in the past we had two farmers here that commercially did this kind of work. Now we do not. Uh, the three. Haulers are from McLean County, unfortunately. Uh, the main haulers, Howard, Clint Patterson, Roger Shockley, and then Paul Bryan from Grayson County. And basically, when this came up, they took it to their attorney, and even with myself and some other farmers signing a disclosure, they said thanks, but no thanks. We're best served to just stay out of Ohio County. And so that's what they've done. They stayed out, and it's going to call cause a backlog, you know, with 50, over 50 farmers, not houses, but 50 farmers with chicken houses, average four houses, you know, that's a lot of houses. There's just nobody to do it. And uh, at the median, uh, judges uh, heard this part of it. They've, you know, two out of the three has said, thanks, but no thanks. And they're going to stay out. I wish we had another option. Really well, this... Farmers Okay, yeah. Yeah. This amendment I read exempted them. Yeah. Anybody hauling them. But then it's come around and kind of asked the farmers to work with me. And you know, you're all in that sure. meeting agreed to. Yes, sir. Uh, and it, it will be, a, in the way I see it, where I read this, it will be up to you all. Right. Uh, to make sure that if there is a better way to help protect our young girl, you make sure they take that. Yes, sir. I mean, I know. I quit turn around to me and how we look for it. But you know, if we're 10 minutes more and it saves the road, oh, yeah. then we need to do it. Sure. And, the, and, uh, we, by all means, I'm going to vote for this. And, <coughs> but, um, you know, I'd like for, for us farmers to stand up and take notice and, and stand accountable because we're going to have to make sure they do this. Yeah. There, there has been no damage. What happened was. Two times, it happened to be the same trucking company both times. 
We had a brand new blacktop road, I mean, and the residents were proud as they could be of that new road. And all of a sudden, they see heavy trucks going onto that road. And we asked that trucker to redirect. And both time, and he's the one that actually, uh, it became an issue because of that one trucking company. It became an issue with him and two roads. And they were happened to both be brand new blacktop roads. And that's, that's where the issue came from. I truly believe that this amendment had taken the, the, the truckers could see they have no problem, but then the farmers will work with us and we'll try to protect the roads by then. Yeah, they agreed to. Of course, Tyson was in the meeting and they agreed to. Uh, all the farmers, you know, I mean, right. all farmers was good with this. Uh, that trucker, I don't think, you, I, I, he may have not been, so I, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Tyson. Thank you, Tyson. Judge, are we having, this is the first reading, we have a second reading? First reading, yes, sir. And there could be amendments in second reading. Now, this, this, is, this is mine. I just first saw this. The only thing I have to be, we knew this. Is there any other farmers just trucking other kind of materials that's got a commercial license where we're not being fair to them? You know, I think we ought to do it for... Well, here's the issue. Farmers running under commercial license. I, I, here to me it was a little bit of a save uh, even though I haven't got with Justin yet and haven't researched it uh, the Department of Agriculture one of the head men up there Mr. Beeler quoted a number to me and I can't remember it of a law a fairly new law that state law actually exempts them. the farmers but some farmers have got commercial license where they they well, these are this thing here is uh, take talks, talks about the commercial tag, but, but according to Mr. Beeler, even the commercial haulers was exempt on the poultry products, poultry and poultry litter and poultry feed. Just poultry, or no, yeah. just no, just poultry, huh? just poultry, no yeah. other livestock, just poultry. Well, I'm just saying, should we not be fair to the other ones that's all in livestock and grain? If you want to do that, we can. I would rather do it on the second reading so that we can try to get this word out to the guys and, and get them back to hauling. Can we get a copy of the KRS taking this too? Uh, I'll ask a county attorney to get it because I did not memorize it when Mr. Beatler quoted no, no, I, it. I don't know. Fine. I just said if you're going to do this, you got to be fair or cost. You know, we, uh, I'll give him Warren Beatler's phone number. I'll give it to Justin. <laughs> Yeah, I just like to be fair. Matter of fact, I, Tyson, give it to him quicker. If he do, he, I'd like to be just fair across the board. On okay. It, you know, because we, I figured we're going to run into an issue where we've got farmers, we've got commercial license, and he's hauling his own grain, but because he's got commercial license, commercial tag, it's going to. Well, first of all, only only ones will stop was the litter trucks. No, the uh, other farm trucks have been around so long, nobody even pays, sees them anymore. The feed trucks and the live haul trucks. Maybe higher than, the, maybe loaded heavier than the than the litter trucks are, but those are the ones that draws attention. Yeah, well, I'd like to just change it for all. Of it. We can we can vote on this in the second reading. Get yes, it. sir. I think it's good. By you, the second reading, I'll go ahead and vote on this too. Okay, but by the second reading, can we look at that and then see what? Absolutely, the absolutely. Like I said I just don't want to do anything. I'm like Joe that we're gonna think well and. What about this? Yeah, okay. I think we need to be fair across the board. Absolutely. We'll do that. Does, uh, so the, uh, the, uh, hauling of the waste of the chickens, is it, uh, it's going to be not be included in the in ordinance? In this ordinance. Not proposal. included in this ordinance. So they won't have to get a permit or anything like that? No. The truck end of it? No. Just the, just the farmers will help us on the protection of the roads. And, uh, and and they've expressed a willingness to do so. Go ahead and do a roll call, Miranda. Small? Yes. Well, I've got this. Barnes? Now, this will get them back to Holland where they won't yes. shut down the chicken right. farmers. Yes. Johnson? Yes. Cam? No. Morphew? Yes. The first reading passed. The second reading will be on the 24th. No, not the next court meeting. Next court meeting. 
Yeah. Okay. And uh, about the next court, court meeting before we vote. We'll, we'll put other agriculture products in there. That okay. And, uh, the October, KRS. October 8th will be the second meeting. Okay. okay. Now the uh, other meetings at September, special calls September 24th, 4 yeah. o'clock. If Yes. And it's to accept the uh, bid from Maverick on this uh, log bridge. jam and the bridge. Let me ask you, I don't know if this is the show that I have in saying. Mm-hmm. You got the. What? I'm sorry. I'm just saying. Fall break is October. I know Justin and all of us. That's fall break. Right well, when like would you break. You'd break. like to move it on move it another it week to third move Tuesday? Yeah, I mean, if that, I mean, that's okay. 15th, October 15th. Or move it back or with it, whatever. But it's moved. You can't move. Right. We just usually during fall break like that, we'll move it. First, we leave the second. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, you. Do you want to be here late? No, we're. we're it's going and to be. At 3 oh my! I forgot. That's not the special call. That we're leaving. At we 3 do a Monday. The, it's been on a Monday. Yeah. We should should we do it back. The thirtieth. Move back. The fifteenth. Fifteenth. Going to have to find the ramp and bills. Does the fifteenth work for you? What? Yeah. The fifteenth too long. No, it's not. Okay. They'll be fine. Everybody good? Yeah. What day is the 15th? Is that that Monday? And no, it's a Tuesday. It's, it's third Tuesday, Tuesday, but it's a third Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday yeah. late. Yes, that's right. And it's the second Tuesday? Third. Yes. Third Tuesday. Third Tuesday. Because second Tuesday is when we're changing it from because it's fall break for the kids. Okay, school. give me that again Tuesday. then. Third Tuesday. The 15th. 15th, yeah. 5 o'clock. 15th. October. October. 5 o'clock. Got gotcha. you. And still September 24th for the special call. Yes. Okay, on the. Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, next, we need to recognize the, the conservation district tax rate. Did they get copies of that? No, I passed around though. Pass it around. They took the uh, compensation rate, like the county did. Extension yeah, service took the 4%. But theirs are so little that it's kind of almost irrelevant. The libraries here, theirs is not very irrelevant. There's more than ours. One thing the library does, I mean, in some ways I think libraries are becoming obsolete, but they do have, you know, internet things like yes, that where people they come do. out of the country and, and, oh, uh, they and use the internet. <laughs> they provide we don't, service. One of these days we'll have it throughout the, throughout the state, and hopefully okay. the quicker the better. Okay, uh, need a motion to uh, say we've got theirs. I'll make a motion to acknowledge the Motion by Joe Barnes to acknowledge the receipt of the Conservation District tax rate. Second. Sam second. Yeah. Sam second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. uh, both like sign. You don't have to sign it. You don't have to sign it. You just, if they want to see it. They want to see it, yeah. <laughs> They've done vote on it now. Yeah, don't matter much. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's like the health care bill, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll see what's we'll in it. After you vote on it. I'll I'll pass it down. Uh, next, I'm gonna recognize Tina Thompson. She's got something to tell us about. I'll try to make it quick, and I'm Please. asking for money, so that will help a lot. Um, I'm with Friends of the Shelter. And we've uh, we're a dog rescue, a private rescue, and we've been doing this for nine years. Um, six years ago, we started a low-income spay and neuter clinic. Two years ago, we started um, spaying and neutering all the people's trees and all mother dogs' trees. So there's really not a lot of reason for people to not have their dogs fixed. If they can't afford it, we usually try to help. Um, otherwise, they're breeding, which brings me to a proposal about a breeder's license. Um, four months ago, I was called... Um, complained about a lady that had 62 small dogs in her front yard. She called and stop. The noise in the neighborhood was ridiculous. Um, she talked to a lot of people, nobody helped. So I went down there and it was um, it was a mess. And I've got a picture that I'd like to, for everybody to see. But it was, it was unbelievable. And animal control really couldn't do anything because there's nothing on the books to help this. So the only way that I feel like we shut her down is uh, Ms. Jones, occupational tax. She wrote her a letter because if you're breeding, if you're making money in the county, you should be paying tax. So there's nothing on the books, so if you don't mind, um, 
There's three uh, for everybody. Everything there's some pictures of. Did you have a number in mind as, as, as to how many would? I actually do, and it's just a proposal. Um, I mm -hmm. talked to Cheryl Bartlett. We've talked to Hancock County, well, not Hancock, Henderson County, um, Bowling Green. There's a lot of really big cities around us, McLean County. They have some really strict laws on this, but we were just asking, and, you know, it's $100 per dog. If they are, if they have a, a large stock of dogs that they're going to, you know, breed. If you're breeding golden doodles and selling them for twelve hundred dollars, hundred dollars a dog shouldn't be that much. The only thing that it tells us is to be able to shut down people that won't buy a lot. And people in those pictures that you're looking at, there's two copies and two pages. They don't run for dogs. So best we know, they did shut down. But um. There would be a few things too, like they should be paying Kentucky State sales tax. I adopt out dogs and I have to pay tax on that. So without them being recognized or have to have a license, nobody's catching them. So, um. And how much did you say in Hancock County, $100 a dog? Well, in Hancock County, they do $50 for the first dog and then 50 per dog. Yeah. So if they have, you know, eight females and eight males, and it's $50 per dog. Um, I don't really know. I know this lady here, you know, 62 dogs, it was just ridiculous. I don't really know. Three years here in the county, I don't think anybody do that much. They may People buy one from them, but, you know, we don't know how many dogs they have. Um, there were 21 dogs in that kennel, and only one would come out. So, kind of shows you how nasty it was. So anyway, um, I don't know a lot about it. I'm kind of hoping that somebody else does. As far as, I just think we need to get something on the books to hold them responsible. We'll get uh, we'll get a group together to look at that, add it from other cup, other counties, and see. I think I'm well, really on board about getting it done. I don't know about the fee structure, but as far as the principal getting it done, I'm all about it. I just think it would help, you know, the county occupational tax, the uh, sales tax, things like that. That should be done too. You know, like I said I adopt out dogs. I adopt them. Nobody wanted them, and I have to pay sales tax. It's, it's kind of ridiculous that they don't. But okay. And then the next one, and I'm sure this has been brought up several times, um, a dog license for the county. And I know a lot of people are going to bark on that, so to speak. But um, the way, the reason I would like it. Or, or at least implement one is that if you go to a house and the dog is in terrible conditions, you really cannot help that dog. You can't cool the dog. You know, it's it's the property of the owner. They have to have a rabies license. We all know that. Most of them don't. So with a dog license, you know, if you said there was a guy with eight dogs chained up in his yard. You know, do you have a license for these dogs? If he doesn't, then you could, you know, fine them, and if not, then you can take the dogs away. But there's just no responsibility at all for dog owners. There's just, you know, you can have 50 or you can have two, and, you know, it's, it's just ridiculous. So I put on here, too, um, all the counties, and every county around us does have a dog license, every single county, except us. Um, I put $8 per dog if it was altered and then 25 if it was not altered. Some of them were even a lot more than that. Senior citizens get the discount, and then a lot of dogs have medical issues, you know, are too old that they can't be fixed. So that's something else maybe to look at. That license, right, the difference in the license fee might be a, go a long way toward the uh, breeders thing too. Exactly. I mean, the accidental breeding anyway. Um, and like I said, he could probably, you know, you could be able to confiscate a dog if they didn't have a license. And I did know, I think the courthouse is probably overrun. The license would not have to be purchased through there. They could be purchased in a vet's office or through the Humane Society, you know, over at the shelter. So it wouldn't have to be. And I, I talked to a lot of people, and a lot of people said, that's the greatest thing ever. You know, it'd be great. A lot of people said, I wouldn't pay it. There's no way to really check it, and that's fine. You know, if you don't pay it, you don't pay it. But if you break the rules owning the dog, 
then you pay it or you give up the dog. So that would help a little. Records, who would keep the records? So if everybody paid and they paid in multiple different spots, <coughs> what would be the records? Um, what some of the counties do is the um, vets sell it. Um, the, like the vets can do it when they issue a rabies mm -hmm. and then they send that to the Humane Society. So actually the Humane Society would be doing that. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, any, any of these dog things or rules, uh, for this to be enforced or become an issue, it would be on a complaint. The, the owner would be having problems right. with neighbors or problems with, exactly. uh, or they wouldn't be there checking the, exactly. the license anyway. You know, no one's going to go door to door. Now. No, we're not going door to door checking them out. The well, there again, it's only on complaints. It's on complaints. You know, if somebody there, complains, even at that, who's going to have the authority to go Well, the animal control officer will. With, and, and of course, anything like that, if a citation is issued, uh, he does it through the sheriff's department. And then the very last one is just an amendment to some animal care. You can read it. It's uh, to me, it makes common sense that a dog should be at least on a 12-foot chain. You know, six foot is what our ordinance says now. They can barely get under a car, and a half the time. If Matt goes out somewhere and a dog has a car for shade to climb under it, that's it. You know, the ordinance doesn't say it has to be a box, it has to be a dog house, it has to be shelter. You know, it's just as long as they've got shade. And then half the time, there is no shade. You know, there's a box out there. There is a box in the middle of the field, and there's a dog chained to it. Well, you know, the box is 100 degrees inside. It's, it's just there's a lot of things we need to catch up on in this county to kind of catch up with the other counties that are doing this. Well, on that one, we'll ask the, uh, we have an animal control ordinance committee, believe it or not. We'll have that to me and make a recommendation to the back to the court. I appreciate that. And Jason, you're still well, on that, right? I mean, that's, I mean, I could say extending that. Yeah, could you, uh, could you call a meeting of that committee and, uh, and suggest it to, mm -hmm. the, and we'll, we'll do a, uh, we'll do a uh, amendment to our ordinance to take care of that. And Whatever also, length you should come up with. One last thing, uh, and this isn't asking, but I just wanted to tell you all. I, I heard some of the meetings, and I think Jason bragged one time about that vet bills have really been down, and that's wonderful. Mine runs $48,000 a year, every year. I have spent almost a half a million dollars. So, you know, I, I don't ask for much, I don't ask for money, but I, I would really like to see some better care for these dogs, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm gonna get out of I'm gonna get out of order here just a little bit before we go to do this personnel thing closed session. I'm gonna go to committee reports. And I'm gonna call on Jason Bullock, and I believe that he's gonna address something that's gonna take care of what a lot of you are here for. So if you don't care, just go with that, Jason, and then Joe. Um. Yeah, we had a needs assessment committee meeting before the meeting here today at 4 o'clock. And I've got it here somewhere. There it is. So there's a whole list of things here. Without reading it, we all went over and kind of went through um, and approved and disapproved a few things. But did, did Larry get a copy of the list before? She gave you a copy. Needs assessment mm -hmm. list. Did you get a copy of it? No. And gave it to you. Do what? It's with your late bill list. It, with your late bill list. <laughs> and uh, and, tell, and and go ahead and. Uh, well, so I was just going to read the motion. I don't. I didn't get one of those. So I did. I wanted Larry to look. I thought maybe he looked over, but I wanted him to. Okay, go ahead uh, and talk about it, Jason. Okay, so uh, there was some uh, money uh, left over from cold servants we received, and we just went through. We had each department request. There were some departments' requests. We put a, a bulk of it in reserves, and then we filled some of the requests. There was one request we didn't fill, but we put it back in reserves too. Um, Without reading the list, I was just going to read the motion and go ahead and 
Right, do you want me to go ahead and tell about, about here? Uh, yes? I will say with the Rockport, because I know there are people concerned with Rockport here, and I will say that that the money was funded to um, approve for the Rockport boat ramp, floating dock, and ramp improvements. So that the money was approved to fund those two projects. And about $70,000, uh, so right? Uh, together? Yeah. About $70,000? Yes. Yeah. So. That's what you guys hear. I was not reading the whole list. It was a long and list. I, was just I, I thought that would make the mayor smile, yeah. but he's not even going to. He got his hand. I can't say it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but that way, without reading the whole long list, we weren't going to read them, but since you're here that way, you'll know that it's been. If, if the boat goes through. Yeah. yeah, and he is the mayor. And they've got a copy of the list, so you got a copy, okay. Once it goes through, do y'all have a timeline? What it's going to be? Well, we'll have to, because that one. Section is over thirty thousand, so we'll have to actually bid it out. And that'll take two weeks. But most and likely, that, that quote will we're be. We're they can start as soon as they can because of, you know the water's down and it's been dry. Unfortunately, it would have been nice to get it all done. You know the way the weather's hit, and we could already do it. But the last person to kind of give me a price on it to to see what we're dealing with, they said they can start in um, a week or two from when we give them approval but we'll have to bid it and see how the bids come in so yeah but we're hoping that they start really soon before we get the fall right 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 this this should be fairly quick this this should be fairly quickly yeah and i'd like to get it done you know at this time of year too because it's not as many people utilizing the boat ramp and it'd be a, it'd be an excellent time to get done the dock you know it could be done at a different time but the ramps with the is a, is a major concern on getting yeah, it done with the sure about the land and land and right. Land and land. Well, hopefully, it's move quickly. Yeah. Okay, so at this time, I'll make a motion to approve the 2019 needs assessment list as presented. Uh, any money left over from the project is to be put in reserves, LGA funds. All line items must request a purchase order number uh, through the treasurer's office. So they can't just, it's not going to go under budget. They have to request a purchase order for each purchase and and will submit the check at that point. So I make that in the form of a motion. Do I, have, I have a second by Joe Barnes. Motion by, Larry, by Jason Bullock, second by Joe Barnes. Now discussion. Of course, it's been discussed quite lengthy in the committee meeting to bring this proposal forward. So, so uh, I guess go ahead and roll call it, Miranda. Small. Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Town? Yes. Morphy? Yes. Okay, now then we'll back up. I need to just ask Renetta to join us in a very short, hopefully very short, closed session. Uh, and I need a motion to do that. We'll step right back here. Motion. Thank you Mo all for coming. Thank you. By, by Larry and Larry? Second Larry? Yeah. Larry Morphy. Okay. Go back into open session. I'll do that with just a gavel. We're back in open meeting. I'll say for the record, no motions were made. Our business was uh, officially conducted in the in the uh, meeting. We talked about personnel issues. Uh, no uh, motions are coming from that. Uh, with that said, is there any further committee reports? Uh, that we've already had the needs assessment report. Has there been any more? So we need to schedule an animal ordinance. Yes. Animal control ordinance. Yeah, and just look and see about lengthening and the length of the chain yeah. requirement in there. Oh, there's, there's more to that subject there. You, you want to read yeah. that paper. Well, I mean, I know, but y'all look it over close. Commit. That's where committees look over things closely. We, when, and of course, I'm going to read it too, but... I want that looked over closely. It's the reason we're going to look at it in committee. Any other committee reports? Bing, now let's go to the magistrate's comments. Sam? Uh, I'm just going to say one thing. Uh, in 47 different parts. No, I'm uh, on your proposed breeder's license, uh, being an A or A, any person who engages in the sale of one or more litters of bucks per year, I won't vote for that. 
uh, more than one letter per year. I ain't saying I would go for it, but it would, it would please me more. And just like me, if I want to raise my beagle hounds, I ain't but raise them to sell, but I might want another. So I'm going to have a letter. Well, I'm going to sell the ones that don't need me, but I'm going to keep them. So, and I ain't going to have multiple letters a year. So, I just want to get that out because I didn't change it on my paper. Just so you know. Uh, and I ain't saying I would vote for it if it changed. I'm just saying that's just something that. Yeah. Uh, I just want to let you know that up front. Uh, and, uh, I ain't making promises, but. Uh, and that's all I have, Judge. Oh, I, in the, in, and I was going to say, in, in principle, I agree with it, but I, I don't want the cost to be prohibitive. But I would like to have it where we'd have one so we could control the uh, control it somehow. But anyway, that's that, let's get that. We'll talk about it after the committee looks at it. Uh, Jason. No, thank you. Um, Joe. Uh yeah, real quick question. We've talked about this in already, but the uh, the routing around the 85 bridge uh, down there in between Rockport and Centertown. Yes. We talked about that Riverview Road. Yes. Had <coughs> we had lengthy meetings and and phone conversations a lot with the uh, with the uh, uh, Frankfurt. With, with uh, Mark Welch, who is the governor's uh, transportation representative with his office, we talked with them. He and uh, we got it to the uh, uh, to the Frankfurt. We got to Frankfurt with transportation cabinet, and everything seemed good. It came back to and and the engineer for District Two come out and said it did not qualify for emergency funds because the. Uh, um, it didn't qualify because it wasn't enough of emergency. It didn't meet the criteria. And that was uh, Engineer Jason Ward from <coughs> Transportation Cabinet oh, hold on, hold on. came did down to it. Yes, yes. No, they did. No, 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 Riverview. Riverview down in Rockport. Bypass. Same day we were talking about it. Mark West called me Friday. But anyway, we. This different road. This had to do with the bypass for 85. I know, but you said the same thing on the other one, so I'm just making sure they're not mixed up. Okay, no. So the, the, just fill in the public, and you know, it'll be recorded, and they'll hear it on the radio and everything. They, the state come down and <clears throat> put up a sign that they're going to close the bridge. It's a vital state road that transports people from the, the center town area to the Rockport area, and the only other way to go around that without driving some back county roads. And, that, and actually, they're gravel. You have to go all the way back to Beaver Dam and back to Rockport. So what the issue came about is we didn't know it ahead of time, or I didn't. They put the sign up, and they're going to close the bridge. And then the school district called me about how they're going to get the school buses from right down on one side of the bridge over to the Western School and to those families down there. And only really option right now is the closest option is Riverview Road, which is a gravel road through, I don't know, a couple of miles anyway. So we're worried about the dust and the safety being so dry. We, uh, and the other option is to avoid that. You would have to go all the way back to Beaver Dam. Uh, what I, like I said, we did pursue it, worked hard on it, trying to get it done. School board's not happy with the resolution we have either. But... Uh, since we couldn't get done that, then I pursued governor's discretionary funds when I couldn't do the money. Governor's discretionary funds don't qualify on gravel road. Wow. So what we're going to do, we're going to grade up, fix up as good as we can, and put that uh, fog coat <coughs> on it for dust control. What, how much is there? This is what I was wanting. That's why I brought it to your attention. How much is left in the middle of gravel, and how much would it cost just to chip and seal that section? And is there any way that we could 60 move down? You know, I know they're in your district, Cam, but is there any way we can move down there and do that? It's 60,000. That's, I thought that was the whole road. It may be. 
I didn't they didn't break it down. Is there a way we could pull off for just a couple days to do that due to the dust control? Well, we've uh, quite frankly we've wallered around here all summer. Yeah. And now it's coming up on winter or fall. And of course fall we never know what fall is going to have in store for us. Uh, but now I'm trying to utilize them every day uh, to uh, to get the work that I need to get done, which should have been started a month or two ago. Yeah. But it uh, would, it's up to the judge's it discretion. Be, it's not the yeah. first time it's been pulled off. But, but if if the if it was the if we got the money and we can afford it, we'll figure out how to get that without hurting anything. We well, should be able to do, do it in a day. Just so week we're making accommodations for the state. Are they making? Yeah, the state has the world more yeah, money they're than doing, we they're doing pretty good. Uh, if the school board wants to raise pain, they need I'm to be calling the state. Roads. They are. And they there is different proposals good. for that bridge to be put in. Have pretty, we may have There's actually three different proposals. Yeah. The best one was actually a, one of them was to shut one lane down, build that part, shut the other lane down, build that part. The second proposal was to build a temporary bypass bridge, That's what I think. Uh, which is the smartest route to go. Uh, Between I call an ace and ace and spade and spade. And, uh, the lady in Evansville is controlling this project. 62. All right. She selected a contractor. And whether it be her neighbor friend, what I don't know. That's speculating. They come in there and bid it to completely shut it down and rebuild it. Forty days, so and no access. Yeah, so the state be. said, because the state sets your teachers, the state set a teacher, and that's right. all the way to me. Turn, come all the way back down sixty-two to the school. That's the only teacher the state will set because it's got to be state road and it's got to be as well maintained as the road that they're on. So when we spend county money to chip that road, and, and Joe, it's your district, if it's your money, and then that's fine. When the state should take that responsibility on, I think it's ridiculous. And yeah, I'm just looking at this, and it would be be my money, but I was looking at the safety issue, and it, you know, the unfortunate and, thing. And I understand the safety issue, and but the buses won't take it in. <laughs> The uh, but like I said, we we didn't take it lightly. We've been working hard, and, and no doubt, I and, say and uh, have. I, our I, contact I, person works hard for it too. Anybody that listens to this on the radio, is yeah. about uh, over. I can get them the number of the lady in Evansville, which I think is ridiculous. Somebody from Indiana, it's probably on our roads, but I can get you the number uh, to call because it's ridiculous what they're doing. And you know, so that's all I didn't say about it. I didn't mean to. Well, just, under, just when the, the school board contacted me, they they had said that they would take that road. You know, if we could get something done, because it was going to save so much time. Yes. And I was just looking at trying to get the safety. <coughs> Not only that, we're going to have so many people coming through there, uh, cutting to work. You know, Milner County to Ohio County, and there's going to be a lot of traffic on those roads. And unfortunately, just so the public knows. I didn't know about it until the sign went up. I didn't know about it either. And then the sign didn't go up until no, it was, it, it was only decided up. that when the sign went up. Uh, I was we was at Louisville at the conference up there and it was on the Thursday of that conference that Nietzsche called me and told me that that's what had to be done because all plan A and two, B was too expensive and they had to do it this way. It's what the, what the state's argument was. Uh, of course, she's relaying it. It wasn't her decision to make. Like, well, why can't they put a temporary? I mean, to me, that's the cheapest. Put a temporary car or two over and then uh, reroute a road around it just for. I, I agree. I agree, but they just uh, we can't. Uh, because you're going to put the kids on the bus longer. It's, you know, it's probably the, the gravel road. You're, it's mm -hmm. probably not as safe as a blackout. Yeah. Road. No, it's it's not a good deal. So but we had tried to fix that. Road, but what we're looking at is. You know, yep. it's like three or four buses and then all the other traffic. So they're going all the way back down and all the way, you know, to get to when they're, when you can probably not, not too far from the school right there. And unfortunately, if I'd known, you know, I would probably try to make some different uh, plans on my chipping schedule and paving schedule this year if I'd known that this was going to be such a 
But I actually thought the state line would come in there and help us out because they're, well, they're going to put a lot of routing around on our. Well, and, you know, we I, thought I, they I were. Um, we thought they were emergency we, money off sixty two for Davis and for uh, Chick Road, and really this yeah. is going to be affected more probably. Than Friday. We got the denial from Frankfurt after quitting time last Friday. Matter of fact, it's about six o'clock. Uh, Mark Welch from uh, from uh, uh, the governor's office called, said it doesn't meet the threshold of that per. Uh, yeah, it might be because it's a gravel road. That's the difference in the two items. Yeah, and then it didn't meet the threshold for the governor's discretionary either. We do have other applications on on that, but uh, the, that road didn't meet it. So it's kind of a it's really a dilemma on how to handle it. Yeah. If we've got the money to chip it, that's what we can do. That'll, that'll temporarily, I guess, through this crisis, I guess you'd say. But anyway, uh, Larry, that's why a week and a half ago was when the sign went up. And it, it, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't my intention for it to be scheduled that way. All right. Larry, you got anything? No. Larry? No. Justin? No, Justin. Well, this, mo this meeting is adjourned. Anybody from the audience? I, I uh, don't think so. I guess not. <laughs>